Once a year, MLM companies love to rent out stadiums and event centers and slap their name all over it. They build massive stages and hire an impressive light and camera crew, and sometimes have fireworks and entertainers like Andy Cohen, Mario Lopez, and Kelly Clarkson. They pay thousands of dollars to hire self-help speakers who know how to strategically pump you up as they encourage you to go for more. They have private parties and bring in high-priced caterers. They have their top distributors in beautiful clothes ready to share how you too can have it all if you just believe. MLM companies love to make these events larger than life. Then they hire a production team to cleverly edit every thrill, every big moment, every firework and twirl, and package it together making sure to leave out anything that doesn't make your heart race. Then they sell you the dream and tell you how you can't miss next year's event. You have to build financial freedom starting today, and they want to help you do it because they care. And I fell for all of it. I attended every team call, every corporate call. I stopped going out on weekends with friends so I could work my business. I read every self-help book under the sun, and when my upline said jump, I asked how high. I was a product of the product. I used words like sisterhood, dream big, business opportunity, and believed cliche sales phrases like a no is never a no, it's just a not right now, and you're making short-term sacrifices for long-term gain, and even don't give up on your dream. I took selfies, bought planners, and wrote down my every goal and piece of content I would post over the next month to hustle for the dream. I did my miracle mornings and expected a miracle. I never put my phone down and was always on. I attended exclusive team retreats and earned corporate trips and prizes. I got to speak at events and never missed a monthly sales quota for over five years. I built a team and had dinners and special retreats and photo shoots and I believed I was the ultimate hashtag girl boss and was going to help other women lead the way and build a bridge to financial freedom. I even got to be on those stages and accept awards. So where did it go so wrong? when I got to peek behind the curtain of the 1% in three different companies. And I realized, wait, it's not the company. The system is designed to fail. I didn't speak out for almost two years after quitting multi-level marketing because I was embarrassed and ashamed that what I had promoted for so long turned out to be a lie. I also saw how oversaturated the MLM industry was becoming and I honestly thought it would fade away, but that didn't happen at all. Now with the global pandemic and seeing how many MLM companies are preying on innocent and scared people, people who will become victims like myself and so many others, I knew it was time to speak up. This is my story of why I left the multi-level marketing industry after being at the top. to create this video several times in the past year and a half and every time I just couldn't do it. Getting ready to record this video today, I got sick at least four times. I had to run to the bathroom. I was so nervous to make this. There's a reason that people don't speak up when they leave an MLM when they were in the top of the pyramid when they were in the one percent and it's because the shame and the guilt eats them up people will absolutely come for me and say oh the reason she's speaking out the reason she left is because she wasn't as successful as she said she was she didn't make any money uh, she didn't put in the work um, she didn't help her team or she didn't attend enough team calls she didn't read enough personal development she's negative these are all the things i know that they're going to say about me because i said them myself about people who left i am to that point though where i can no longer stay silent anymore 
I will not put on a smile and just not talk about what I saw and encountered while in multi-level marketing, community-based marketing, network marketing, direct sales, <laughs> they're all the same thing, and be guilted into not speaking up. I'm done being the good girl. If it makes me a bad person for speaking up, I don't care. If it saves one person from going through what I went through over the six years that I was in multi-level marketing, then it's worth it. An MLM's biggest weapon that they can use against you and that they do use against you is shame. It's the shame that when you're in the cult, <laughs> when you're in multi-level marketing, it's the shame that you're never doing enough, you're never working hard enough, you're never being enough, you need more, 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 more. You need to do more, 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 more. You need to help more people. It's always, there's always a mission that an MLM is trying to uh, perpetuate as to why they're helping people, as to why they're helping save the planet or <laughs> save people's health or whatever it is. There's always a mission and they use that as a weapon to guilt you into to staying, into working so hard, working yourself to death practically, uh, bugging your friends and family because you're you have a bigger purpose now. And so it's that shame that like, I'm never enough. I need to do more. I need to not be, be negative. There's so much toxic positivity in the culture that it's, it completely represses you from, it tries to repress you from feeling anything other than positivity, happiness, and joy, which completely denies the human experience. So when you do start to feel things like guilt or, being unhappy or anger at what you're seeing happen or maybe that what you've been told is going to happen isn't happening all of a sudden you're thinking oh wait i'm being negative and so you're completely repressing all your normal human emotions under the guise of toxic positivity and an mlm doesn't just use that shame against you when you're on the inside they use it against you when you're on the outside because you start to wonder once you leave, oh my gosh, did I make people feel this way? Did I make people feel like they weren't good enough? Did I not try hard enough myself? Am I giving up too soon? Will I be seen as negative for speaking out? And it's all this shame that just compresses you down and, and it breathes silence and more shame. And so you never really hear, I haven't really heard the top 1% speak up, but I have heard others who have left speak up and just their own stories I could see myself in. And I thought, if they only knew what happened at the top. My deconstruction really started when I remember in, I think it was 2016, I was at a retreat with um, my upline who made over three million a year. And there were a few others there who were in the million, Millionaires Club as well. And I remember looking around at everybody in the retreat. Like I was so excited to be there and get to be around like these people that I viewed successful. Because keep in mind, it doesn't matter if you're making $1 or $1 million in multi-level marketing, it's never enough. It is never enough. Your best will never be good enough. And you always need to do more. You always need to reach the next tier because it's gonna be better up here. You're going to be able to um, experience a better life up here. You're gonna be able to do so many more things. And it's not true. And at this retreat, I just looked at everybody and I was thinking, why aren't any of these people happy? <laughs> They're making seven figures. Like this is what we're told brings the financial freedom. This is what we're told we are working so hard for and nobody was happy. Throughout the several days we were at the retreat, we never left the house once. It was um, like a mansion that my upline had rented and we never left it one time, not even to, to go out to a dinner. Uh, because everybody was so exhausted. Everybody just wanted to relax in their pajamas because they were so exhausted. We were constantly burnt out. We were hamsters in a wheel. And that was really when things started to break down for me. And I was shown behind the curtain because I got scared and I thought, what am I working so hard for if, if, they're not happy if nobody's happy if nobody in this company is happy and so I thought it was just the company right I thought it was the company 
And when I switched to another company, I found out, oh no, it's this one too. What's going on? My upline in my last company that I was in was making thirty to forty thousand dollars a month. I saw her statements. I saw them. She was so stressed out. I can't tell you how many leaders in the top one percent that I saw get so sick and have to be hospitalized from illnesses caused by stress. Like doctors literally couldn't put their fingers on what exactly was happening, why they were so sick. And they couldn't, none of the doctors could say like, oh yeah, it's this thing, you have this disease, yada, yada. They, they all told them, I think you're stressed. I think this is from stress. That's really scary. And I, and I started to look around and think, wait, why are we like preaching this lifestyle that it's going to get better and better once you get up to this rank? Because obviously it doesn't. Obviously it's just harder and harder and harder. So let me back up. Let me tell you my story of how I got into network marketing. I want to be clear that I don't believe the people in these companies are evil. I believe them to be victims. And I will make some other videos talking about the psychology behind why I believe them to be victims, why I look at them as and myself when I was in it as no different than those indoctrinated into a cult. And I want to make very clear that the people who I believe are evil are the companies themselves and the CEOs at the top. I was a hairstylist from a very small town in Missouri and I had left the church for many reasons <laughs> after I went through a divorce in my early 20s. I had probably been out of the church for about five years or so and having been raised in church and with that church community and you know the community that you see every single Sunday where you give each other hugs and it's all great. Um, I miss that. I miss that but I was not going to go back and what do you know? <laughs> enter network marketing, enter MLM. Um, I found a product that I really liked and it was a weight loss shake or a meal replacement, a protein shake, which I've drank protein shakes since high school. So for me, it wasn't weird for me to, to drink one or, you know, it wasn't something brand new to me. And I always thought that those things seemed a little bit scammy, but I never really knew much about them. I had just heard of pyramid schemes. And then while researching the company, I came across a video from a woman who I would then join and she would become an upline. And her video seemed so genuine. She seemed to share her heart out. She had been a bartender. She had, you know, been able to pay off all this debt. She had been able to completely and radically change her life. And she was sitting with the CEO and they were flower, they were showering her with all these flowers and gifts and trophies and plaques and, and money and all these beautiful trips and incentives. And I thought, oh my gosh, like, this is amazing. Like, this is absolutely crazy. And I thought, you know what? She doesn't seem scammy. Like she's not blowing up my inbox or like she, she says she doesn't cold message. So I reached out to her and that's how I got started. And I was a hairstylist in debt. I had medical debt. I missed having that community. So immediately when I was brought into her groups and the groups of everyone in the company, I was just love bombed, right? Like we want to introduce you to our newest member. <laughs> and everyone in the group is saying, welcome, welcome. Oh my gosh, so good to have you. Welcome, so happy you're here, yada, yada. Um, like, girl, you're gonna do great. And I just thought, oh my gosh, these people are so nice. I've never had all this support. Where's it coming from? I want to be clear that it is all conditional. Yeah, there might be some people that I still talk to from that time. And I still talk to some people from who were on my team. And, you know, I have nothing but love for those people. But I want to be very clear that the majority of the friendships you will make in an MLM are conditional. And as long as you are in the inside and you are being a product of the product and you are promoting the company and you are trying to build your team and you're, you know, helping people, you are loved, you are supported. But the instant you start questioning, the instant you think, I don't know 
know if this is for me or I don't know about this or this seems kind of wrong. Why would why would the CEO put this out? Why would the company put this out? This I don't know what's going on here. Like instantly you are told to not question, to to not to not be negative. So I ended up spending almost 6 years in network marketing. And by the end of it, I had went through so much financial stress, grief. Oh my gosh, I lost so many friendships friendships, um, but including a, a best friend of mine who had been my best friend for eight years and had signed up under me. She blocked me when I left and I spoke out against the company. And it was just, you know, I don't, I, like I said, I think that these people are victims and I know that I was so indoctrinated into the companies and I thought that I would be <laughs> with them forever. Like my first company, I thought that I would be with them forever. Like never leave. I thought it was it was gonna be my thing forever. And then the house of cards fell and they fell hard. <sighs> 16 months after joining my first MLM, I was able to quit my job as a hairstylist. And you know, I thought I was just sharing a product I loved. I thought I was helping people. I was helping people lose weight. I was speaking about health and wellness and fitness, which I love. And I didn't realize that 99% of the people were losing money. I didn't realize that the company, most all MLMs, all of them, they do not have the distributor's best interest at heart. And so slowly I started seeing and peeking behind the curtain, but I did all the things I was supposed to, right? I, I constantly talked about the opportunity. I posted three times a day. I shared the lifestyle. I showed the lifestyle, right? And I remember feeling like I had to show like my car and, and it just felt icky. Like I, I think I posted maybe two or three pictures of the Mercedes that I bought and it just felt icky. And by the second or my, my last company, I was in, I say two and a half <laughs> because my second one, I was only in for like 90 days. And I was just like, ah, this is not for me. It was a brand new company. It was wine. And I was just like, you know, this is not for me. But the amount of cyberbullying I went through when I would start with a new company, the cyberbullying from my past company was insane. And I was being attacked. And then, you know, I think, did I attack people when they left? Did I, did I talk negatively about them? I, did I block them because they left? Like, you know, was I scared that somebody was going to poach my team? Because that's the, you know, the rumors that always go around, like, oh, you need to block them, tell your team to block them. They don't need to be looking at what they're promoting or that they could earn so much more money over there. It's this vicious cycle of turning everyone against each other when really it's the CEOs that we should be turned against. <sighs> By my last company, I thought each company would be different. That's what you'll hear a lot of people say when they, they go to a new MLM, like, oh, my company is different. My company is not like that. They're all the same, whether it's a binary or a unilevel compensation plan, they're all the same. And in my last company, I remember earning the $500 oh, a month car bonus, meaning that that money wouldn't be coming to my account. But if I went out and leased a car under my name, then they would pay the uh, dealership $500 every month. However, I would have had to spend about $1,000, maybe $1,100, $1,200 on product a month to get that $500 car bonus. And it didn't even matter if I sold $10,000 of product from my product website, I still had to order $1,000 of product myself every single month. And yes, I was told to, I, sh I should be selling that product, right? But I just, I was like, how does that make any sense? <laughs> like what? Everything that these companies do is to, pr is to protect them. And the higher you get up in the, the pyramid, the harder it is to break away and admit that, okay, this isn't all it was cracked up to be because it's cognitive dissonance, right? So you think you have these rules in your head about what's moral, what's right, your values, and then you start doing something that you think is all about it and about your morals and your values and your belief system. And then you get deeper and deeper in and all of a sudden you find out, oh my gosh, wait a minute, this one thing here completely goes against what I believe. 
but your brain cannot stand those two conflicting and contrasting ideas. And so in an effort to make things easier for you and your brain and to appease yourself, you think, well, this might be bad, but this over here is really, really good. And these are the good things about this. And so you, you keep going and you just ignore the bad things that are happening. And I finally just, I couldn't ignore it anymore. I thought this doesn't get better no matter what company you're a part of. It's so hard because I think one reason people who, why people don't speak out when they've been in the top 1% is because like I said, the shame, but you also have nothing to show for it when you leave. Unlike if you say go to college, after so many years, you're going to have a degree, you're going to have that diploma, that piece of paper that you can have with you forever that says I have a degree in X, Y, and Z. But after you leave a company that you have invested your all in, <laughs> you have nothing to show for it. And that can be the hardest thing. And that's where that shame creeps in and makes people not want to speak up. But I am done staying silent. I'm done. I just can't do it anymore. And I just tried to keep the peace and I tried not to speak about it. And I would get so triggered when somebody shows up in my inbox and they're like, hey, hon, <laughs> wanna join my team? I think that you would be great. I love your social media presence, yada, yada, yada. And you're like, ah! If I could just tell you, if I could just save you from what's happening. And I've tried. I've talked with people. I've been like, I was in it for a long time. I was successful. And I'm telling you, I walked away for a reason. It's very hard. And I've had those distributors admit to me, yeah, you're right. It's really hard. And then I try and share more of my story with them. And they're just, they're just on to the next person on their list to check off, <laughs> to, to message, to join their team. <sighs> I just gotta speak out because if I can help one person wake up before a lot of damage is done, then it'll have been worth it. One of the hardest things that I experienced was when I hit a certain tax bracket. My first year, I made around, I think, 30,000. My second year, I made over 70,000. By my third year, I made over 100,000. I made, I think, 106,000 that year. And, you know, I was able to put my little sister in Kenya through university and that felt really good. That was one of the good things to come out of it. But there were so many hard, terrible things that came out of it that it's why I walked away from the industry as a whole and seeing what it does to people, seeing how it completely crumbles and erodes their self-esteem. I just hate that and I hope that I didn't do that to anybody. The second year that I made over 70,000, I had saved up a ton of money. I had saved up over 10,000 in my account. I had paid off so much debt, but I didn't realize that if you're not paying quarterly taxes, you get fine penalties. And that, oh my gosh, that threw me for a loop. But What's very interesting is that all the information these MLMs throw at you in an effort to keep you indoctrinated into their system, all the information that's like, oh, here's this self-help book. Oh, make sure you go in our online office and read through all the things that all the forms and all the info that we're giving you for only a small fee of $15.95 a month, where we teach you mindset, where we teach you, you know, how to post graphics, how to share your story, how to tell about the product, what to say about the product. Nowhere do they offer real financial guidance and support. Nowhere do they say, make sure you speak with a CPA or a tax representative or a tax attorney, because if you start earning a certain amount of money, watch out, you have different rules coming your way. And so I will take partial responsibility. Absolutely. That, oh crap, I should have saved more for taxes. But I didn't know that because I didn't pay quarterlies, that once I started making a certain amount that I was going to be slapped with an $11,500 fine by the IRS. It threw me for a loop. And I remember thinking, why did anyone tell me? Why did these people above me who are making way more say like, hey, you need to go, you, you like, this is how you need to 
do this with your business. This is what you, I would recommend for, there is nothing like that. And I really think it's because when you are your own CEO, because a lot of people, anti-MLM anti -MLM channels will say like, no, hon, you're not your own boss. You're not the CEO. Well, actually, I had my own corporation that I had to enact or like some people get an LLC. I had to do my own payroll. I had to end up hiring a CPA. So in fact, I was my own business owner in a sense, but you're your own business owner in the sense that all the burden falls on you. And that way the MLM gets off scotch free. They get off completely free. They have no responsibility of carrying any of that burden because they enact you as a 1099 contract worker. So yes, you're doing your own payroll. You're doing your own taxes. You're paying all these penalties and fines. If you don't know that you have to pay quarterlies, you're doing all this stuff. Um, but you're your own boss. You're your own boss. It's okay. You're your own CEO of your own company. No, you're not the CEO. You you are the CEO of of where it hurts, where you where it counts <laughs> with the IRS. But they can shut down any second. They can completely annihilate your income. My camera overheated. Got a little too worked up for too long. The companies can annihilate your income in a matter of seconds. I've seen it happen personally with people I knew when a company got upset because they joined a second MLM thinking that they could make more income and the policies and procedures were changed by the first company so that they could just cancel their account and that family lost all their income. Like I have seen companies like Advocare announce with no warning to distributors, hey, we're switching to a sales model only. So all of that residual income that you've built off your team is gone. Um, and these people had no warning and this is their livelihoods gone. These are people who thought that they were helping people be better, that they thought they were making a better life for their families. And they thought that they were with a company who had their best interests at heart and they didn't. None of them do. I guess I was delusional. I thought that, you know, a few years ago, I was seeing how saturated the newsfeed was becoming with everyone and their mom in an MLM and trying to hawk products. And I just thought, wow, this has gotten so oversaturated. Because when I started in 2013, like nobody was doing it. Nobody was talking about those things online. Um, and it just was like everywhere all of a sudden. And I thought, this is going to die out in a couple of years because it's just too saturated. And to my amazement, it has not died out. If anything, it has become more rampant, more infested, and there are just more victims getting scammed everywhere. And I just I won't stay silent anymore. One thing that the companies like to push on you is that, you know, when you succeed, when you hit a rank or when you get a sale, like, oh my gosh, you know, you will just be bombarded with love, but also the reminder that, wow, this company is amazing for giving you the opportunity to earn this income. So anytime you succeed, it's because the, co the company is so amazing and that they've allowed this, they provide this path for you. But any time you mess up, any time you have a question, you start to question certain things, any time you don't do well, well, that's on you completely. That's... 1000% on you and you need to figure it out. You need to do more self-development. You need to work harder. You need to find more people. You need to have a positive attitude because that's your fault that you're not succeeding. And it's complete BS. One thing I've noticed that I feel the anti-MLM community, which I absolutely love now, <laughs> one thing I, I feel that they get wrong sometimes is they'll say that, you know, all MLM products suck. Well, that's not true. There are actually some products that are pretty good um, and they, you know, they taste great or they, they work well, they fit well, whatever it is, you know, and that's just not a valid argument that all the products are bad. I mean, I remember hearing that when I was pro MLM, I remember hearing them say that and I'm like, they're on crack. Like I love my products and I did love the products or I wouldn't have used them. Like there wouldn't be so many consumers using these products of these companies if they didn't actually like them. They're sure there are probably a, a good amount of people who use them just so that they can or say they use them to get money. But there's some that are good. But what's important to know is that 
any MLM product can be found for at least 30 to 50%, if not more, cheaper online on Amazon or somewhere else in a store than what that company sells it for. And very quickly when you join an MLM, you'll notice that it's not about the product so much anymore. Of course it is, be a product of the product. Make sure that you're doing everything you need to every day to stay a part of the system, to show others that you're living the lifestyle, that you're working towards your dream. But don't forget that if you wanna make more money, you need to, you need to recruit, you need to build your team so that you can earn more income. Because let's face it, um, 10, 20% commission is not going to earn you that lifestyle that they sell, that dream that you sell. And so all of a sudden you're selling the opportunity more than you're selling the actual product. And that's where they get you and that's where it becomes where you can't speak out about anything that's wrong in your life at all. And I remember like there were certain uh, political aspects or, you know, things that I wanted to talk about that I was seeing in the world happening. And I was like, I better not talk about those on my newsfeed or on my social media because I don't want to, I don't want to appear negative because then if I appear negative, it's going to affect my business and I don't want my business affected because that's my livelihood. And they know that. That's why they indoctrinate you with so much self-help and guilt you into always staying positive or else everything bad that happens to you is your fault because you didn't try hard enough, you didn't work hard enough, and you didn't stay positive enough. And it's not just like any other business because there will be there will be if you if you have a team and you slow down like say you need a break for a few days which most of the network marketing uh teams are ran on social media now and so if you let's say don't get to your messages for a couple days or if you don't post in your team group for God forbid, more than 24 or 48 hours, you're bombarded with messages from people on your team or leaders above you who are like, hey girl, are you okay? What's going on? Do you need me to check in on your team for you? Because some of your team was wondering what's going on with you. And all of a sudden then you feel guilty and you feel like, oh no, like I don't want my team to think like I'm abandoning them. And oh, I don't want them to look at me as less of a leader. And it becomes this cycle that you can't get out of. And it's where all this shame and guilt creep up and why it's so difficult for people to speak out, especially those who were in the top 1% who had these big teams because they just feel really guilty. And they also feel like, did I do people? At least that's what, how I feel. I'm like, did I do people, you know? But uh, like I said, I really think that they're all victims and we have to we have to look at the CEOs. We have to look at the people who, who are um, claiming to be coaches for the industry. And they're saying, I will help you build an amazing network marketing team if you follow my seven steps here, or if you read my book, yada, yada. Most of these people have never been successful in their own network marketing company. They just got tired of the rat race and the pressure that is network marketing. And so they thought, I can probably make more money selling how to have the dream to the people seeking the dream. And that's what they did. The CEOs, those people, those are the ones who are the cult leaders. The other ones are a victim. And it's hard because I have been through some hell. I have been cyber bullied. I have had people who were my mentors, people who I thought were my good friends say the meanest things about me or block me on social media. And and I just remember getting so depressed and, and thinking that, like, oh my gosh, was everything I had ever known, was everything I had ever done, was everything I had ever preached a lie? <laughs> and it's it's because they've just been indoctrinated to, to, to shut out anything that is not for the company, for the product, even if they're neutral about it, you shut it out. Your family, your friends, you ignore it. And so as mean as some of those people were to me, I have to remember that they were victims too. Some of them are still victims and it's just brainwashing. It really is. I had to get out because I was tired of recruiting to fail. If you were somebody in an MLM, whether you earned money or you lost money, I want you to know that you didn't do anything wrong and you're not a bad person. You're not a failure. That's the biggest thing I want people to take away is that you're not a failure. You are a victim and now you can be a survivor. 
I probably rambled a lot. Um, if you want to subscribe, you can subscribe. If you want to not subscribe, if you were subscribed and you want to unsubscribe because now you think I'm just being negative, <laughs> that's fine. I don't care. If you want to learn how to join my team, click the box below. No, I'm kidding. I have no team for anybody to join ever again. <laughs> so thanks for watching and, and there goes my notebook.